Now, the morning sprint. Two men were injured in a shooting at a shopping mall near Seattle over the weekend. Harborview Medical Center spokeswoman Suzanne Gregg identified the victims as two men ages 32 and 27. The local police department wrote on Twitter that the shooting Saturday at the Westfield South Center Mall appeared to be an isolated incident between potentially known individuals. There was no immediate word of any arrests. The shooting prompted local businesses to go under lockdown for a few hours. The mall closed for the rest of the day and reopened Sunday morning. At least 20 people were arrested during May Day protests in Seattle and Portland. Police in Seattle said 14 people were arrested for crimes including obstruction, property destruction, reckless driving and assault on Saturday as several marches happened throughout the downtown area. About 150 people participated in a nonviolent march in support of migrant workers, workers' rights and racial equality in Seattle. In Portland, peaceful demonstrations during the day gave way to violent demonstrations Saturday night in which windows were broken at multiple businesses near City Hall. About 100 people were involved in that march and police announced six arrests. Let's take a look at the local coronavirus case rates. Given this current state of the coronavirus pandemic in Benton and Franklin counties, the Tri-Cities may be moved back to phase two of reopening today. Friday's update from the Benton Franklin Health District showed an increase of 53 new coronavirus cases in the Bi-County region, increasing the total case count to just under 28,000 since the pandemic began. At last checked, our region is failing to meet the minimum case rate requirement to remain in phase three of Governor Inslee's reopening guidelines. Hospitalization rates are on the rise again. Currently, 26 of the 391 hospitalized people in the region are dealing with coronavirus complications. And if the Tri-Cities are moved back to phase two, small business owners will likely be impacted the most. Indoor capacity will be reduced by half to a maximum of 25% for retail stores, worship services, personal services, and gatherings. And outdoor entertainment will be limited to groups of 15 people. About 10% of the population of a small city in north central Washington has tested positive for COVID-19. The outbreak was traced to large indoor events last month in Republic at the local Fraternal Order of Eagles Hall. Ferry County Memorial Hospital officials have confirmed more than 100 cases with one reported death. Since the April 9th through 11 events, including a membership drive that featured dinner, live music, less than one quarter of the county's residents have received a vaccine, according to the Health District. Governor Kate Brown is defending her decision to implement further restrictions in one third of Oregon's counties, saying that for the second week in a row, the state leads the nation in the fastest growing infection rate and that she is gravely concerned about hospital capacity. In an attempt to slow the spread of the deadly virus, restaurants in 15 counties closed indoor dining on Friday and significant capacity reductions were implemented in gyms, indoor sports facilities and indoor entertainment space. Last week, the Oregon Health Authority reported that the state recorded its fifth straight week where cases have increased by 20 percent. Throughout much of the country, Americans are seeing signs that the light at the end of the tunnel draws near. Just over four months since the first public COVID-19 vaccines went into arms, the U.S. crossed a major milestone Friday with 100 million Americans fully vaccinated. That may be less than a third of the U.S. population, but enough for a chance at more post-pandemic normalcy. And with the July 1st full reopening on the horizon for New, New York City, indoor dining there is increasing to 75%. Our healthcare team worked to determine what was the date that we could do it the right way. They believe in July 1st, I believe in July 1st. We're on track to get 5 million New Yorkers vaccinated by July 1st. Uh, it's the right moment to make this move. Vaccine hesitancy still remains a challenge. While the average number of COVID-19 deaths are at their lowest in months, the number of daily vaccinations administered dropped to 2.6 million this week. The Seattle Seahawks entered the 2021 NFL Draft with only three picks this season. This was two fewer than any team in history and tied for the fewest of any team in the NFL since 1999. Their first pick was wide receiver Dwayne Eskridge of Western Michigan at 56. Eskridge is an impact returner and skilled slot specialist who will rack up yards after the catch from Russell Wilson. He averaged over 200 all-purpose yards per game last season, which ranked second in the FBS. With their second pick, the Seahawks selected Oklahoma cornerback Trey Brown at 137. Brown is another slot player, this time on the defensive side, as he could contribute as a nickel corner. At 5'10", he's not the biggest corner, but he still battles in coverage and has great speed. 
And finally, the Seahawks capped off what could be the smallest draft class ever with one of the biggest players ever, offensive tackle Stone Forsyth of Florida. The Seahawks pulled off a trade with the Bears to get him, dealing picks 217 and 250 to Chicago to move up to 208. Forsyth is listed at 6'8", 307 pounds, and was a two-year starter at offensive tackle at Florida. And now to the results of our poll question of the day. Earlier, we asked you, how would you rate the Seahawks' 2021 NFL Draft? The audience gave an average, came out to 2.9 stars out of five. Thanks for weighing in. All right, let's look at what our weather's going to be like today, my friends. We are looking at highs anywhere from 70 to uh, 75 degrees for much of our area. A little cooler in Ellensburg, of course, at 63 degrees. And uh, even as we're looking up uh, into uh, Clay Elm at 57. So, yeah, cooler day out there today and increasing clouds by lunch hour and all the way through this afternoon and overnight tonight. Uh, we are going to see these clouds finally start to diminish late tonight. But overnight lows tonight will be a little warmer than what we had last night. 53 for a low tonight in the Tri-Cities, 50 for Yakima, uh, 40 to the low. 40s for other areas across our region. Seven day forecast, sunny skies tomorrow. Be ready for that one. Uh, 78 degrees and then we'll be a little warmer on Wednesday, but then look at that cooling down to 66 and dealing with clouds on Friday. Tri-Cities, Yakima, very similar with 74 tomorrow and sunshine and cooling down towards the weekend. All right, thanks, Jeff. Thanks for waking up with us and watching Good Morning Northwest. GMA is next. Kept gave you local news is always on at yaktrinews.com. Have a great day.